In this session, we're going to have a tour of the GOMO screen editor and to look at how you add in content to a screen. So here I am looking at my list of projects and I'm going to select the company onboarding project that we started earlier. So if I click on this project here, this shows me my project structure with the menu and these three topics. So I'm going to select this first topic that we labelled introduction. All I do is just click on that and now what it does is open up the editor in a separate tab in my browser. So here we are in the GOMO editor and the key things here is on the left hand side we have the navigation panel. This will show us all of the actual screens that we have within this topic. So if I wanted to uh, label this first screen, it defaults saying screen one. So if I just click on that and now move over to the right hand side, this is where we get the properties, but not only for the screens, but for all the assets we're going to be adding in. So I could just rename this, call this one welcome. And now clicking back here, it just automatically changes the title. So there's no need to click an apply button. GOMO will automatically apply your changes uh, once you move off the particular field that you are editing. If I want to add in more screens, I just click on add new screen. So here I've got two more screens and again I can just rename these. So I'll call this one our history and this one, I'll just uh, label this as well. Okay, so I now have three screens within this topic and uh, you can just check which topic you're in. It will show the topic title at the top of the screen in the middle here. So, so here, if I click on this first topic, in the middle here we have the content area. Now this is where we're going to be putting in all our text and uh, images and video files and so forth for this particular screen. And what you can see here is it's added in what's called a content block. Now in GOMO the great thing is you don't have to specify what size screen you're going to be using. So you don't have to say, right, I'm now going to design for 1024 by 768 and then realize that you also want to have a tablet version and also a smartphone version and have to create different size courses. In GOMO, it works through this the use of these content blocks and those content blocks there are divided into a number of columns and it's those columns that we're going to be adding in the content and it's the columns and the and the content block structure that GOMO uses for its responsive layout. So um, if you're viewing this on a desktop it will give you a certain layout based on those columns but then as you reduce the size down if you're viewing it say on a smartphone then it will flow those content blocks and columns to give the best fit and the best experience for the learner on the smartphone device. So if I want to change the number of columns, for example here I want three columns so I just go out to the layout properties on the right hand side and now just click there and I've now got three columns within that content block. And you can add in more content blocks to build up your screen so if I now go back to the left hand side and click on the assets tab this gives me these panels of all the different things that I can add in in terms of content. So if I click on layout, it's showing me the content block here. And all I have to do is just click and drag the content block where I want it, either above or below the existing one. I'll drag it in there. And again, it's giving me that two column layout. So now if I actually want to add in some content, for example some text in here, I can just go back to the asset panel here and I can just look at uh, what we have that we can add in. So the things we can add in, we have rich media like audio and video. 
we have all these presentation type assets so from from buttons and text and images to interactive images to more sophisticated interactions such as film strip and comic strip also at the bottom here if i click on question you can see all of the different asset types that we have for creating quizzes and assessments. So all these different uh, question types from selecting from list to multiple choice and so on. So let's do something pretty fundamental. Let's add in some text. So here, if I go down to the text asset, again, I can just click and drag that into that content block into a particular column. If I want to move it, if I realize I've put it in the wrong column, I can simply click and drag and release it there. So that gives me a placeholder for my text. If I want to actually add in some text, I can just double click on that. And now it brings me up the text content panel. So I can put in my text. And I can also, within this text panel, I can be copying and pasting either as plain text or I can copy and paste in from Word. And I can also here choose to make particular words bold or italic and underlined. You also have the option for having numbered lists and bulleted lists as well. We have the alignment, how we want to align this text, so I'll say center this text. And then what we have are the styles here. Now remember what we're not doing here is specifying the exact f font and color and size and positioning. What we are doing here, though, is assigning this text a certain style. So we can have titles, headings, and so on. So if I want to make this a title, just select that. Now, how that will actually appear will depend on the actual theme that you select. So it's in the theme that we specify the particular font styles. And the great thing about that is it means that, uh, that if you have a, a a whole team of people working on a particular course, then you know that as long as they're selecting the right style and then they're applying the correct theme, then you'll get a consistent look and feel throughout your course and also across projects if the same theme is selected. So let's just click apply. And now that's then added in our text in there. Similarly, if I wanted to add in an image, for example, a logo, I can just click and drag, say, a static image up there. Again, we have the image placeholder. Now, we have all the different things that we can adjust for this particular asset over here in the Properties panel. So, for example, I could put in a graphics brief. I could leave a placeholder and just put what graphics should go in there and then a graphic designer could go in and have a look at it and see what graphics are required. So here um, I can either double click to browse for the particular image I want or over in the properties panel I can click the browse button there. So what this is showing me is the select a file panel. So here I can choose which folder that I'm going to browse to find the particular uh, image that I want. So you can see that we have a folder that's been created for this particular project. But here I'm going to select the folder where I've stored a company logo here. And again, this will be accessible across projects so the whole team can be using this. You can either have it in list view or thumbnail view. So that's the one I want, so it selects that and it puts it in there. So we can carry on adding in text and graphics and all these other types of uh, assets and interactions to a screen and then move on to the next screen and carry on adding it in. And when we're done editing for now, we can just click the Save button and it just shows us that it's saving the topic 
and now it's saying that the topic is saved OK, so my editing is complete for now. I can click OK and click Close, and that returns me to the project structure again.